Hey hey, this is Tom from Audio Audio and I am going to show you how to make a kick drum synthesizer. So it's really quite easy, let's get an oscillator, we'll stick with the sign, route it to the outputs. Now then, if we set a constant of 60, that's middle C, that's just the MIDI value, amplitude create a constant of 1. So that's good. Now what we want to do with the synth is create an envelope. Attack and decay is all we really need. And so we'll get the trigger, built in module, midi in, gate. So the gate is great. We already have one here. Let's just delete that. Every time you hit the key on the keyboard, it sends a value of one. And so that triggers this. We create controls for the attack and the decay and they change how fast it goes from 0 to 1 and then 1 back down to 0. So if we hook this up, it should sweep up to full volume and then back down again and the values for each one should be 40 and 40. And of course I'm hitting the keys but we need to set the constant to 1. There we go. You can hear it hitting the keys. Now then, what we want to do is we want to duplicate this. And this time we're going to modulate the pitch. So let's drag these down. So the pitch of the bass drum is really important. You want it tuned to your song. Let's use C as the root key. And let's tune this down two octaves. So let's put this at 36. That is just 60, minus 12 for an octave, minus 12 again. Let's have a listen, you might need headphones for this, so put them on now. So you can hear the sub. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the second attack and decay. Now then, we want this to be the pitch envelope, so let's name it as such, pitch. And this is the amp envelope. Attack, we'll just attack P for pitch, decay P and we'll leave these the same. So you want to make sure when you've got several different knobs of the same name you can differentiate them in case this knob ends up over here and vice versa. So now what we want to do is we want to add this value to the root knot. So let's just add And what we need to do here is create an audio, this white dot, to a vent converter. So Reactor deals with different types of signals. And we need to change it A to E, which I already have pretty easily on the search. So this just converts it from a white signal to an orange signal. You don't really need to know much of the theory behind that, other than white to white, orange to orange and then certain ones are able to accept both. So let's have a listen now. So you can't notice much of a difference, that's because the value is one. So let's move this all the way up to a big number, let's say 100. We should be able to hear it sweep up 100 semitones, then back down 100 semitones. So this is the basic premise of the kick. You have a very fast pitch sweep and volume sweep down. So the attack is obviously very quick, it's instant. So let's bring the attack down on both the pitch and the amp, and we'll hear this. Now if you like laser gun kick drums then that's you, you can just play about. But for anyone who likes good music, we don't want a laser gun, so we want to first of all turn the pitch decay down because we don't want a big long sweep so let's play about let's keep it there for now so you can hear there's the high pitch frequency at the very start for a very brief time that's the click of the kick drum and then as it detunes down to 36 the root note you can hear the basic root note so we can make the decay really long for a trap kick or we can make it really short. 
like it round about there. So now we can play about with this value. So instead of going from 36 instantly up to 136 by adding 100 with this module, we will make it, let's try 60, so it's a bit less squeaky. There we go, that's instantly better. So this is the basic premise of your kick drum. And what we can do, it's always recommended for your reactor projects, is make it as neat as possible. So when you're revisiting it, you can easily find what route the signal goes. So there we go, we have a kick drum now.